Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and thank you so much for stopping by my video. Uh, today it is another floss tube update. Although I have no cross stitch to show you. <laughs> it's been a very um, weird time for crafting. Just haven't really had the, the time to dedicate to it. So Instead, I'm going to show you a lot of knitting today, and I'm going to share with you some of my plans for the upcoming weeks. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first of all, you can't see it, but I finished my Sorrel t-shirt. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off my cardigan. Um, this is the Summer Sorrel tee by Wool and Pine, and I finished. I have not yet blocked it, so the sleeves are a little puffed up because that has to block, but I can't really stand up. There we go. There she is. Gorgeous. Completely finished. It fits wonderfully. And I promise I will give you a picture when it is blocked. But the weather has been terrible, so I haven't been able to do that. It completely finished. Off the needles. The ribbing is done. And just to give you an idea, the last time that I showed it here, I was at this stitch marker here. I had not done the sleeves yet. So we did finish the whole thing and it's beautiful. I love the colors. I like the way that the color kind of, because it's all stockinette um, on the inside, this side is all pearl. I like the effect that this has. It kind of has this cool like line effect, whereas the stockinette side, the knit side looks very different. The color that I used for the yarn is Yennefer by Curio Yarns. And you could definitely see how the color changed from the top where we did a lot of the, uh, where the, where the circumference was smaller. You can see how that kind of, the teals came out at the bottom, not as close together at the top as it is at the top. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but this is my second ever sweater and I loved it. So I know that some of you are going to ask me. This is my uh, Stiatch shirt from last year. It says uh, cross stitch reduces stress. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to cross stitch in a couple weeks. I've just had a real block or like my stitchy bug is gone at the moment. But I'm really hoping that because I've had such a long absence from it, that I'll be able to get back into it. And I will share with you in just a few moments the projects that I'm intending on working on in the holiday season and my plans. But first, I will show you what I've been working on all this time. I started the Adventuresome Wrap by Amba O'Brien and I had been working on it. I think I shared it with you last time so if I have a picture I'll put it on the screen now. Um, this is a gorgeous gradient wrap. You can do whatever you want with it but I've decided to do a rainbow fade and I'm using mostly mini skeins from Ruby and Roses yarn. And I'm doing this for the hashtag Merry, Merry Mini Mal 2023 on Ravelry. And this is what it is looking like. So we're already in green. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? So 
So Ruby and Roses had an advent calendar or a countdown um, back in 20, well they have one every year but in 2021 is when I bought mine and I've only substituted a few colors because there were, I felt like there were a lot of blues and purples that were missing from a rainbow, a full rainbow in her countdown. So I have taken out the neon colors that she had and I've replaced them with other colors that were not, would have fit the fade better. So for example, this green, this green here is a leftover from a wrap that I, my first ever wrap actually, that I made around my birthday in 2020. Um, but these are all her colors. And I wish that I knew what names they are, but I don't. Isn't the speckling gorgeous? This yellow right here with all the pinks in it, this reminds me of Funfetti. Like the, the cake. This is beautiful as well. I love all the purples and the green. And they are just stunning. So I have quite a few colors and I just reached into my mini skeins, which I know a lot of you are curious. This whole bag is full of mini skeins and the bag on the top, this is not an exhaustive count, but all of this is leftover yarn. I have more <laughs> in other bags. You might have noticed that um, the shelves behind me are very clear. That's because we are in the process of moving and I have packed up all of my cross stitch that I'm not planning on working on in the next month, month and a half. Uh, that includes all of my knitting whips as well. So my intention for December is certainly going to be to continue to work on this because it is kind of, you know, a countdown type project and it would be really nice to finish this by the end of the Merry Minnie Mal, which is being hosted by Wild Cottage Knitting and one other person whose name I'm forgetting at the moment, but um, I would like to continue to work on this. Uh, and if I do get burnt out for whatever reason, I do have another project that I haven't like engaged with in a long time. I have it here. My beautiful My Cottage Number no. 9 bag. I love these bags. They're an Irish, um, an Irish company on Etsy. And if I can get the name of it here. have the chart printed. You know what, I'll just, I'll put it on the screen because I can't remember what this is called, but it is gorgeous. This is kind of like a Christmas scarf that I'm doing. And this is made with baby alpaca. It's so soft, but it's also really slippery and a little bit hard to knit with. The yarn is 100% baby alpaca, La Brabis, which was a knit crate brand, and in the two colors, Dogwood Berry and Ancient Pines. Um, if you can find them on a D stash, they are gorgeous, gorgeous yarns. And I did buy as much as I could for this project. But this is eventually, one day, going to be my winter sweater or scarf for the holiday season. And I love it. Um, it is the first pattern that I am really focusing on using a pattern for. So I'm following a chart instead of written instructions on this one. It's so pretty. And I guess maybe I forgot to show it the last time, 
because my stitch marker is all the way down there. Um, but yeah, if I get bored or if I feel more like I need a festive project, I will whip this one out. That's the only one that I've kept out aside from the adventuresome wrap. Oh, I don't think that I mentioned this. Um, this right here is an ornament that was the 2019, yeah, 2019 pattern, free pattern from Four Boys and an NL Girl. It says uh, Joyous Noel, or Joy, well, however you pronounce that in French. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't speak French. But um, this is a beautiful little cross stitch. Maybe you'd like to see it from back in 2019. I just did a flat fold finish on this one and I included a button. And then 2020 she had another one. Or was this the Woodland Creatures Sal I think it was called? And I just went ahead and did the bear and called it a day because it's so cute. Isn't that adorable? A little bear in a wreath. So cute. I figured I'd show you the stuff behind me before we really get into it. And um, also, these are some of the boxes that I'll be opening during Flossmas, which is going to start December 1st. So please make sure that you subscribe and hit that little notification bell to be uh, notified anytime that I put up a new video in the month of December. You're gonna wanna see these. I'm sure that they're gonna be amazing. <laughs> and there is one more on the way. I have picked out a couple of projects to choose from during December because I don't wanna be stuck on just one project. I find that that burns me out and it adds too much pressure. I'm not a, even though I did try to be during this year, which I will have an end of year wrap up video um, before the new year, but where I'll talk about this extensively, but I did try, I experimented with stitching on one project for longer than just like two or three days. I went for a month or three weeks on just one solid project. And I made sure that I was putting in something like, you know, 15 hours on a single project at least before switching it up and I kept my works in progress weekly to a bare minimum maybe two projects which probably made for a really boring floss tube but it did give a lot of progress each time that I showed the project which I thought was really fun so this year I've decided I'm gonna have a couple options to choose from. The rest are in storage, but these are the ones that I have. Starting first with a gift. I was given, excuse me, I was given a gift last year and this is a project which has been very thoughtfully curated it is going to be on Black Ada, which I have here. And the colors are here. I believe that I bought the DMC colors. Yeah, I bought the DMC, but she gave me the pattern and did the kind of surgery on the pattern. So here's the colors for this project. Now each day there is a an envelope and like for example this one says 14, day 14, and then I open up the envelope and I can see a part of a pattern. And the idea is that after 25 days I will have stitched the entire design. I think that some days are more stitch heavy than others. I can't find the first one, uh, the first day, but um, it's a really cool idea. And it's like one day, one color. 
and then you just stitch that one color in the entire design. Um, I would like to try to do some of this this year. Even if I only get a couple days, it'll still be a start uh, because I was not able to do it last year. And I did regret that. <laughs> I regretted not being able to start it, but there was a lot going on. So we'll, we'll give it a pass. But this is exciting to me. I think I know what the design is, but that doesn't make it any less exciting. So that's one option that I could possibly stitch on. And that's a 14 count black Ada. I'm just gonna lift from the pile and um, show you, I'm gonna cover the pattern here. But this is a Cal's All Crafts bag. I'll have her listed below. This is Christmas by Renato Perlin. This is a beautiful chart, beautiful paper pattern. It is huge. This is on, I believe, 32 Count Morel by Fortnite Fabrics. I hope, excuse me, I hope I can show you this well. Isn't it beautiful? I love this Christmas tree. It's it's gorgeous. Um, I did start doing back stitching uh, as I was going along. I don't know if I'm going to keep that up because the strands are long and mm, but uh, I, I'm also hoping that this actually fits on on this piece of fabric. I have it in me to perhaps just stitch all the way down the middle to make sure that um, that it will fit before I go any further. But yes, this is a beautiful little Christmas pattern that I would like to stitch on. It's kind of my festive thing that I've done for the last two Christmases, I think. And this is a little clay, polymer clay needle miner from ACF Creations on Etsy. So cute. That was a gift. It's very sweet. And I am substituting some colors. So I'm not using just DMC. I'm also substituting in some flosses from my stash, mostly Victorian motto, um, which I no longer purchase. But then again, in fairness, I'm going to put this out there. Um, I am, I have been on a pretty strict no buy this year. And tell me if I'm crazy, but I think next year I might even do a no new starts uh, with an asterisk as well because uh, there may be times especially when I'm together with my friends next April it's the end of April where we'll be at Stitch North together and I may want to um, stitch a new project with them so the next project that I kept out is my transpired tapestry by, um, oh lord, these 20 stitches in Uncanny Kari, sorry. Um, and I am doing an almond M&M's conversion, which if anybody wants it, I will let you know. And I am stitching this on 32 count Lucy and Ricky by Fortnite Fabrics. I did get good progress on this this year so far, so I would love to continue to work on this. I find it very soothing because it's mostly outline and then fill in. So filling in all of those spaces is going to be really nice and will not take a lot of mental power and the end result is going to be gorgeous. I love this fabric. I love what's going on in there. So, and I, I love, obviously I love the designer. Um, Dee has another unicorn out 
The Lesbian Pride Traps tree is out, which I also have, but I haven't started. Um, and there's a third one, which is rumored. And very eagerly awaiting the third one. So um, I would like to get that done because I love working on it. I love the colors and everything else. I also have pulled out a Barbara Anna. Oh, by the way, that was a, this is a Bags Plus little fold. Um, they have moved to the States, so if you, they used to be in the UK, but if you're interested in bags like this, I will link them down below as well. I'll link all the, all the stuff. Um, this one is in a Love You More, and it is called Santa, the Dove, and the Key by Barbara Anna, and I'll have to put a picture on the screen. Um, I am in two minds about this because I feel like you can't see it. I can see it. This is on Lap and Loops Muadib 28 count linen, and this is like a rough linen, but I feel like, there we go. Okay, this camera, this camera can, can handle it. Um, the snowflakes at the top, you could not see that with my old camera. Um, it looks really good in person, so I'll keep it. <laughs> now you can see it, and there's a point. Um, so this is a gorgeous little Santa, Santa, Barbara Anna that I started. Um, and I started it last year in August, on August 20th. Um, I'm using from Stash, and I forgot about this, but some of these, I don't know what DMC number they are, so I'm going to have to re, uh, redo the labels on them, but I'm using these little floss cards that I had in Stash as well. Gorgeous. And this little thread jewelry that I got, which is some bunnies. So cute. But I do have that just in case I want to do something that is a Barbara Anna. Um, I love her, I love her style. Um, and I have a lot of her. I have a lot. I just purchased um, Cleopatra by her, but I have this rule that I only stitch on one pattern per designer at a time so that I have motivation to finish. <laughs> the only exception to that rule is having an earth designs because of how large they are. Okay, my last project that I have out is in my Garon Toten Bags bag. And this is, drum roll please, the Frisian Band Sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery and Evertote. And this came out last year. This was their uh, 2022 Countdown Sal. Um, and I did not get the box because I've just been in a place where I don't buy as much from North America because of my location and just how much money it costs. <clears throat> uh, let me see actually, what day am I on? I am using a 16 count Ada for this and it is called April Showers by Be Stitch Me. I believe I am on Yeah, I'm on the 11th. I'm on the 11th of December on this project. I was keeping up pretty well. It's a little bit wrinkled, but look at how pretty. I love this project so much. And last year, I also had the Hobby Wishes. Um kind of like an accessory countdown, and that's where that came from. Isn't it cute? 
So this project is a mixture of fussy cutting and um, just letting the thread do what it wants because I'm using a Silks For You hank that is highly variegated and I adore it. So I decided to do that on this fabric and it's stunning. I love my little leeks. I love my little birds that are kissing. They're just so cute. Some of the bands look a little wild, but that's okay. It is fun and that's the whole point for me. <laughs> um, and it's not like typical, you know, holiday colors. It's, it's fun. And, uh, that's, that's what drew me to using it. And I was hoping it was going to keep me on track every day in December, but unfortunately a lot of sad things happened in the past couple years and Christmas hadn't hasn't really happened since 2019 um, we had one in 2021 it wasn't big but anyway um, those are the projects that I am I have pulled <laughs> for working on this December and we shall see where I get to, if I get to them or not. I'd love to hear your plans, what you are planning on doing. For me, I will be opening these calendars and also there's one more. So we have Diamond Art Club's calendar. If you'd like to see the entire um, unboxing of this, then go ahead and check out my main channel, which is Rachel Ray Craft, where I do a lot of diamond painting. Then we have Asylum Fibers. This is their Halloween countdown for the month of October. And I have, I have not opened it. I was not here at early October, so we have this to open. We also have the Fiber Fox. And I'm super excited about this because I loved what they did last year. And the one that is not shown is So Royal, which is a lovely fade and I'm excited to see which colors um, she chose. So um, we have lots to look forward to and December 1st is just around the corner. So I hope you'll join me again. Please hit the bell. Um, I will be posting here daily and I hope to get those episodes out as early as possible. I'll show you whatever progress I made the night before on my projects. We'll open the calendars and um, yeah, have fun. So a little tiny itty bitty peek at what I've done for the day. So there won't be any dedicated Floss 2 videos until probably the end of December where I will do like a wrap up and talk about my plans for next year and all of that, um, which may not even happen until New Year's Eve <laughs> at this rate. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you got some crafting done or whatever it is that you needed to get done. <laughs> I often watch floss tube while I'm cleaning house. I don't know about you. Um, thank you all again and I hope to see you all on December 1st. Take care and stay safe. Bye!